Milk would have been kept at room temperature for four or five days until it became thick and sour. Four or five gallons would have been the usual amount churned. Every farm had a different technique. So on her first week she was shown how the churning should be done here. After today she would have to do the job by herself. The type of churn used here is a staff or plunger churn. By the 1920s many farmers wives had acquired this model which was much less tiring work. From start to finish the whole operation took between 30 and 40 minutes. Not so bad when two people were present as one could relieve the other every few minutes. But for one person churning alone it was indeed very tiring work. Large farms, which specialised in dairy farming, were by this time sending their milk off to the creameries for the mass production of butter. On the smaller farms, the home production of country butter was still quite common into the 1950s. As well as the up and down movement, the staff was also given a twist on the downward stroke in order to agitate the sour milk into butter. After about 25 minutes of churning, the butter was beginning to separate from the milk and could be clearly seen floating on top. 10 or 15 minutes of churning was still required before pure butter would be produced. When the churning was finally completed, about 6.5 pounds of butter had been made. The buttermilk left in the churn would be used for human consumption. Some would be used for baking bread some would be sold along with the surplus butter and the remainder mixed with potatoes was used for pig feeding. The butter was carefully washed three or four times to ensure the removal of all the buttermilk. It was then salted. The amount of salt used would have varied from farm to farm and a woman who had the reputation of making good butter had always a ready market for her produce. Because of the slow methods of transportation, it usually took a long time before country butter arrived at the urban centres. This meant that butter, which was of good quality on leaving the farm, was often inedible on arriving at the big towns. It was said that in cities such as Cork and Liverpool, a lot of Irish butter was used only to grease machinery. <laughs> 